At this meeting, we've been discussing the use of response-adapted therapy for the treatment of Hodgkin lymphoma, and we've been discussing some of the recent trial results, large randomized studies which have used interim PET scanning to determine the response to treatment in a variety of different settings. This includes both early-stage Hodgkin lymphoma and advanced disease. What we've found is that you can use interim PET to determine modulation of therapy, escalation of treatment for patients whose disease is responding less well, and de-escalation of treatment for patients who are responding well to therapy. What this allows us to do is to strike a better balance between the effectiveness of treatment and maximizing the chance of cure, and minimizing the risk of serious long-term side effects from treatments such as extensive radiotherapy or alkylating agent chemotherapy. What the trials have shown is that in in general, what the trials have shown is that in general we can safely de-escalate treatment either by removing consolidation radiotherapy or reducing the intensity of chemotherapy for patients who have a negative interim PET scan. We've also found that escalating the intensity of treatment for patients who start, for example, with conventional ABVD chemotherapy is an effective means of salvaging patients who have a positive interim PET scan. The overall results of treatment for patients with Hodgkin's disease are excellent, with survival figures at five years well above 90% and above 95% in many cases. The important challenge for the future is working out how to use this information about interim PET scanning and also to combine this with new analyses of baseline characteristics which have an important influence on the accuracy of interim PET. In this way, we will be able to individualize patient treatment much more effectively in the future.